Welcome, NCLEX High Yielders. This is Dr. Zishan, and I'm the host of NCLEX High Yield Podcast, where we will be giving out daily content for your exam, tips and tricks that the boards love to ask, and overall general information on how to study, what to study, and complex topics broken down for you. Whether you're a first-time test taker or even a repeat test taker, we have helped people across the globe pass their NCLEX exam, so do not give up and get motivated. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast and also visit our Instagram at NCLEX High Yield, at NCLEX High Yield, where you can DM us questions so we can answer them on the podcast. Also, check out our website, www.nclexhighyield.com, and subscribe to receive a link to our weekly free Zoom session. Free Zoom session where I drop all types of content, break down complex topics, and make them easy for you to understand every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you guys then. Take care. The first thing that I like to start off with when I start with cardio, cardio is high yield. Look, let me show you guys something real quick. If you don't know this, this is what you should be looking at. 219 questions on cardio alone. If you don't think cardio is high yield, you are highly mistaken. Highly mistaken. With cardio, make sure you guys are spending the time on cardio. Look at the other questions on here. The distribution is identical to your test. Why do I like starting with heart failure? Because I can show you what's normal. In order for us to understand abnormal, we must understand normal. I've got people that try to memorize all the signs and symptoms of heart failure. Guess what? that's never going to help you pass the exam. If you are memorizing and you cannot explain to me what's happening, and when I do my one-on-one sessions, when Nurse Brooke does her one-on-one sessions, I guarantee you the question that we will ask you the most is why? Why did you choose that? Why is this happening? Why is this going this route? Why are you choosing this answer? If you can't explain to us, then it's probably not going to be something that you understand completely and you're trying to memorize it. You can't sit there with heart failure and memorize the symptoms. You can't say, oh, it's orthopnea and dyspnea and crack. No, you have to understand it. So first we start with normal heart failure. The way that I break down the heart is even though it's one organ, I separate the right heart and the left heart because this is actually how it works. So you got your right heart, your left heart, your right atrium, your right ventricle, your left atrium, your left ventricle. And in between it is your lungs. How does the normal blood flow work? Well, we've got our superior vena cava and your inferior vena cava. If you don't know your basic anatomy, please brush up on it. And then this is all venous blood that's coming from the body. Venous blood is what? There's no oxygen. We've used the oxygen up. That's why it's blue. Inferior vena cava is all the blood that's being drained into the the veins below the heart, and then they're being pushed back up so we can go into the right atrium, right ventricle, into the lungs so we can get oxygenated. Superior vena cava is all the venous blood, all the deoxygenated blood, all the blood that's coming in above the heart. And it's draining now into the right atrium, drop into the right ventricle, into the lungs to get oxygenated. Once it gets oxygenated, it's going to go into the left atrium, down to the left, oops, left ventricle, out the left ventricle through the aorta into the body. Now we've got oxygenated blood. This is normal. And on test day, if you have problems understanding how the blood flow works with the heart, draw this out. Just don't draw it before your test starts because that's a big no-no for both your guys' boards and my boards. Once you start, then you can start drawing things out. Once you start, You can also write out the eight prioritizations so you don't get panicked and blank on them. And you can kind of turn to them. All those different things you can write out once you've started the exam. Now, let's talk about heart failure. For the sake of the boards, if you see heart failure, if you see congestive heart failure, decompensated heart failure, unless it specifically says right-sided heart failure, it will always be left-sided heart failure. Very important to know that. Know the difference between the two. If I'm knocking out the left heart, I cannot pump the blood forward. I cannot pump the blood through the aorta. 
So the blood is not going forward. What's going to happen to this individual that can't get that warm, oxygenated blood? They're probably going to be pale or pallor, maybe cold because we can't get that warm blood out. How about clammy? Absolutely. Absolutely. If I cannot push it forward, the only way it can go is backwards. So if my left heart is not working, it's going to back up into the lungs. They're backing up into the lungs. Now, as I start filling up these lungs, what am I filling them up with? Fluid, fluid, fluid. What is that called? Pulmonary edema. This NCLEX High Yield Podcast is brought to you by Immunacy. I-M-M-U-N-A-C-Y. Immunacy.com. Immunacy is an immune system booster formulated by doctors and pharmacists. This team of MDs, PharmDs, DOs, and PhDs have put together a proprietary formula with the highest quality ingredients to keep you in your best health. All natural, gluten-free, zero sugar, vegan, no GMOs, and fully bioavailable. Stock up now to keep your immune system at its best. Immunacy is now available at immunacy.com. Check them out. And now, back to the podcast. What is pulmonary edema? Well, pulmonary is the lungs. Edema is excess fluid. It's swelling, secondary to fluid. It defines itself. I tell my students all the time, I'm like, look, if you see certain words and you don't know what they mean, if you don't know what pallor means, if you don't know what edema means, atresia, you know, fistula, whatever these words are, look them up. If you memorize things, you won't get them. If you understand this is the lung, swelling secondary to fluid, we are going to have pulmonary edema. How does pulmonary edema present itself? Pink frothy sputum. If the fluid is backing up into the lungs, what does fluid in the lungs sound like? Wheezes? No. You think I'm going to throw that on a select all that applied? Best believe it. Wheezes are going to be from bronchoconstriction or from bronchospasm. Fluid is going to sound like crackles. If I've got fluid in the lungs, am I going to have shortness of breath? Absolutely. Am I going to have dyspnea, trouble breathing? Orthopnea, trouble breathing while laying down? Absolutely. Understand it. Understand it. Once it backs up into the lungs, now we're backing up into the right ventricle. Now we're backing up into the right atrium. Now we're going up the SVC and down the IVC. If I'm going up the SVC, what vein tracks along my neck? How about my jugular? If I've got my jugular vein and there's fluid backing up, do you think it's going to be distended? Absolutely. Jugular vein distension. JVD. Don't memorize JVD. Now going down the opposite side, going down our body, what are we worried about? Well, again, edema. How about peripheral edema since now we're going down? Peripheral edema. How about pitting edema? Okay, saying the same thing. How about increased girt? Well, that's just saying swelling, secondary to fluid. Maybe in the abdomen, all saying the same thing. Understand that it's fluid backing up. Fluid backing up. That fluid retention is going to cause weight gain. Weight gain is secondary to this edema and fluid retention and this fluid backing up, right? So now let's talk about right-sided heart failure. Now I'm knocking out the right heart. Well, if I'm knocking out the right heart, it can't pump blood forward into the lungs to get oxygenated. It stops right here. So it's just going to back up down the IVC. So you'll get that peripheral edema. You'll get that pitting edema, that girth, that swelling. And same thing going back up the SVC, our JVD. But nothing to the lungs. The lung gets spared. So this person won't have that shortness of breath or those crackles or that dyspnea or that orthopnea or that pulmonary edema. So this is the difference between right-sided heart failure, left-sided heart failure. Again, I cannot emphasize enough. If you see heart failure, decompensated, congested heart failure, congestive heart failure, what do you think that congestion is talking about? The lungs. Try to make sense of things, right? If you understand it, you're good. Now... Let's talk about the treatment. Okay, so what's happening? We're getting, we're not able to pump blood forward. So all this blood, all this fluid is building up, building up, building up. Now we're edematous. How are we going to get rid of this fluid? Diuretics. Good job. Diuretics. Now we're going to get into some farm. So we're going to give them diuretics to help them 
get rid of this fluid, clear out those lungs. With the weight gain, with somebody that's got heart failure, we are going to make sure that we check daily weights. Avoid, not monitor, avoid sodium. So that, that doesn't mean I can have a bag of chips once a month. It means, no, you're not allowed to have anything that has sodium in it. Chips, frozen dinners, eating out, things of that nature, you're going to avoid, not monitor. Diuretics. So what's the most common type of diuretic that we use? Loop diuretic. Loop diuretics are furosemide, but everyone knows that. Everyone knows furosemide. You better know the other ones, torsemide and bumetanide. You have to know these. And yes, everyone already is putting out my, my mnemonic. Oh, dang. These drugs, this is Lasix for those of you that know the brand name, but know the generics because they're not going to give you brand names on the exam. These are loop diuretics. So the mnemonic that we use is O, oh, dang, orthostatic hypotension. Why orthostatic hypotension? Because we are making them hypovolemic. So a side effect is if we give too much furosemide, now we've volume depleted them. We've made them hypovolemic or we've dehydrated them. When they stand up, they're going to get faint, dizzy, and have a syncopal episode. Orthostatic hypotension. So understanding the side effects, why? We're diuresing them. We're dehydrating them. Ototoxicity. For the sake of the boards, the reason why ototoxicity can happen is because of too fast of an infusion. If we infuse this drug too fast, it can cause ototoxicity. How is that going to present? Or how are the boards going to ask this? They're not going to just say, oh, you know, this person's got ototoxicity. That'd be too easy. How about tinnitus? How about ringing of the ear? How about balance issues? So make sure that the infusion rate is kept down. Hypokalemia. One of the eight. We're getting rid. We're getting rid of electrolytes to the kidney. The one that, that loop diuretics get rid of is potassium. One of the eight that we're freaking out about. Cardiac dysrhythmias. This patient will go into V-fib and then they will die. Potassium. All diuretics that you're going to come across, loop diuretics, thiazides, are all going to be potassium wasting because we have a specific class of diuretics called potassium sparing. We'll get into those a little bit. Hypomag, magnesemia, not something that typically gets tested much. Dehydration, well, yeah, we're getting rid of all the fluid. Allergy. I've had three students tell me that they got asked this question. This is a sulfa drug. But it doesn't say sulfa in it. It's not like Bactrim, which is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole or sulfasalazine. It's a sulfa drug. So make sure prior to administration, look for these little words. Prior to administration, know that this drug is a sulfa. Ask them if they have sulfa allergy. It works on the kidneys, it can become nephrotoxic. How do we monitor if the kidneys are being affected? Any drug that is metabolized by the kidney, you're gonna check your B and creatinine. You could check, you could check uh, urine output, I'd be okay with that, but B and creatinine is gonna be our go-to. And the last one doesn't get tested, it's gout, but for the sake of completion, I give you everything. Hey guys, Dr. Zishan here. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys could kindly subscribe, leave us some stars, whatever you think it's worth, and leave us a review. We always want to get better for you guys and want to keep putting out this free content for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one. See you on the next podcast.